Hi guys, James at Rampant Line Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one we are going to head up to Landskrona here in Skåne in the south of Sweden and we're going to revisit a brewery who you've seen me review a good number of things from now and this is the second in this particular series that you're seeing me review. So we're going to go back to Brekeria and this time we're having a taste of the Veiled Mashush. So this guy comes in at 5.4%, it's a sour beer obviously because Brekeria are a specialist sour beer brewery but this one is infused with L flowers and I'm quite interested in this one because I really enjoyed the field lilac that I had from them before but the original Mashush beer um, this one has a rating in 92 overall and rate beer and 98 within the style and I really as I say I really enjoyed the lilac that I had from these ones this one's been aged in oak barrels and it does tend to be the case that sour beers age very well so I'm very curious to see what we have for this one I think this is one of the first elderflower beers that I've actually reviewed for you on the channel as well so very curious to see what this one throws up because this is a brewery I've had some very good experiences with and I always enjoy reviewing the random things from them so this was yet another one of the beers that they released through the uh, the small parties in Sistem Balagat here in Sweden on the 7th of September 2018 so very curious about this one and as always I hope you guys enjoy my take on this beer so anyway as is usual with my reviews then I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery if you want to get straight to the tasting just fast forward all the usual links are in the description below that's the brewery website the link to my other reviews that I've done from Breakeria before. No doubt there will be some more in the near future. There's all the usual social media. If you want to see more beer reviews, do please consider subscribing to the channel. The whole channel, of course, has a geography-based tagging system, so you can go into the homepage and search for beer based on country, city, state, county, prefecture, whatever it is you're interested in. Do check out the playlist of beers from different countries. There is one there for all the Swedish beers that I've reviewed for you. That's constantly being added to. And as always, please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review. It's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely appreciated. So anyway, to tell you a little bit about Breakeria then. So Breakeria, as I've told you before, were originally based in Djursliv, which is just outside of Malmö, but they're now based up in Landskrona, which is kind of halfway between Helsingborg to the north and Malmö to the south. But the company was founded back in 2011 by the Eck brothers. So this is Frederick, Christian and Andre, and they're a specialist brewery in sour beers. They use Britannomyces and also Lactobacillus for this. They're one of the, I think they were the first in Sweden to do this and as, as to date the only as far as I know brewery to specialise only in, uh, in sour beers there are Temple Brewers up in Uppsala there's Urebro Brewers who are doing some um, uh, sort of Berliner Weisses and things like that and you also have the Dugas Breakery in uh, Gothenburg who are doing some sour beers as well but as far as I know uh, Breakeria are the only ones who completely um, specialise in sour beer so it's kind of a risky business move that actually to start up a brewery without you know with solely focused on sour beers because it's one of the it, it's becoming more and more popular but at that time particularly when these guys opened up sour beers were not all that popular at all actually so you know it's quite cool to see that these guys have survived and even thrived actually but the original brewery that these guys had was in the old brew house in Jersliff, which was a share brewery for local farmers, a kind of old um, commune brewery, if you like. But they brewed their first beers in 2012, and this brewery had quite a modest capacity of only 500 litres per brew, giving them a yearly capacity of 38,000 litres. As of 2015, though, they have a new brewery up in Landskrona that can produce 20 hectolitres of beer per brew, and they now have a, fer a fermentation capacity of around 80 hectolitres. And apparently, they were produced their wild beer brunch, uh, wild bunch beers continuously in Landskrona but they do still brew a few of the odd sour patch and speciality things in Jur's Love. Um, I'm not sure if they are still doing that but that was something that um that was something that they did up until fairly recently, I have to say. But in 2014, the brewery caused quite a stir because they withdrew completely from Sistembolaga in Sweden, citing mainly bureaucracy and some of the, the rules and things like that. Sistembolaga, in some ways, it's very good, but in some ways, it's kind of hindering, especially for microbreweries and things like that. But they decided to focus on their exports abroad, and it was the case for quite a while that apart from some of the supermarkets and the, the folk souls, the 3.5% beers, you could not get the breakery stuff in Sweden for a while. You had to go over to Denmark or to Norway and things for that but um, their beers made a return to say Stambalaga from 2016 onwards and they've never had a problem with them since and it does seem to be that say Stambalaga has kind of taken on board what's happened with them and uh, you know it does seem to be a little bit easier for breweries to output different things because I think Breakeria they do like to change their range uh, up a little bit which is pretty good because there's always different things available from these guys and really they do show you how much variability and how much variance you can get within the sour beer 
category. So I do really do recommend that you check out these guys if you're particularly interested in sour beers. I know there's the likes of Crooked Stave over in America, and I think Jester King are one of the other big ones over there. But Breakeria probably are the best known sour beer brewery in uh in Europe at the moment, although Brewdog have just started up Overworks, but yeah, let's not get on to Brewdog, but Breakery, I really do recommend that you have a taste of some of these beers if you get the chance, but that's all you really need to know about the brewery just now, let's get on to the actual tasting of this beer itself. So I'll just bring up the camera and let you have a little look at the artwork on this one, I'll just turn the computer off there for the after having the brewery notes, but there you can see there's the nice uh, artwork on this one, very very similar to what we had for the uh, the Veiled Lilac of course. I think the Breakery it do tend to use the same labels and just change the writing basically or put a little bit of colour into them. So nicely presented this one, there you can see there is the special Veiled bottle cap on this one, the Wild series. Um, but yeah, nicely presented, it says on the side here, Mashish is part of our Veiled series, fermented and aged for a long time in oak barrels with mixed house cultures and hand-picked elderflowers. So yeah, it contains uh, corn malt, wheat malt, rogue, uh, flare blummer, which is elderflowers and hops. So yeah, it should be quite interesting. Contains malted barley wheat, rye, I guess, is rogue, uh, and uh, yeah, ninety-seven percent organic. It was saying so, pretty cool. So without further ado, then let's get this guy out and we'll get on with the tasting. And these beers, of course, do have a cork in them as well, so you need to be prepared for these when you get them. It took me a little while on the last video to get this open, so just bear with me with this one. But yeah, um, as I said, probably my favourite beers that I've had from uh, Breakery before have been the, um, I would say probably the Swedish Ninja was a really good one, Purple Rain, um, Wrapped in Red was also very good as well. I've actually found Breakery, they tend to be really good at the, um, the low alcohol beers, you know, even the folk souls that you get in the supermarkets tend to be really quite good, but... Just hope I've not got any cork in that. There's cork all over my desk now. But yeah, um, they always tend to be really good at the uh, the low ABV beers as well. But let's see how we get on with this one. You can really smell the elderflower and a bit of the sort of lemongrassy notes coming out the top of this one. But let's get it out then and into the glass and see how we got on. As I told you at the start of the video, the um, original Mashish beer, the elderflower one that they do, is very highly rated on rate beer. I think it's a 92 overall and a 98 within the uh, the category so really interesting to see how the how in particular the barrel aged one holds up actually but yeah look at that lovely big hazy beer this one you can see there's a solid finger of I would say a pure white frothy head on this one some big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass and a few little ones just heading up towards the bottom of that head there but overall it does look uh, really quite nice actually so if I put my fingers behind the glass you can see completely hazy that but it looks uh, absolutely lovely really you know it does look just like a one of these big hazy IPAs or something like that so let's take a closer look at the aroma then and just see how we get on oh yeah so with this one absolutely it's the elderflower that you can get right away with this beer you can definitely smell some of the the sort of grassy notes from the hops there's a little bit of an almost lemon grassy quality to this beer it's a little touch floral as well, but really the elderflower is kind of dominating that side of it. Yeah, nice little touch of elderflower to this one. You can definitely, the malt base is really interesting this as well. You can definitely smell the wheaty, bready kind of things. There's a little bit of a, you know, you can pick up a little bit of the rye graininess in there as well. There's a good bready presence to this beer, but there's also that kind of woody, oaky vanilla kind of thing coming out of it as well. It kind of has pretty much what you'd expect, to be quite honest with you. I can see two little bits of cork just floating around in this. need to be careful not to drink them. But yeah, you can really smell it. It's pretty much what you'd expect. I mean, there's nothing overly surprising about the aroma of this one. I think I said the same about the... Um, the lilac as well, it's a nice aroma, but nothing overly complex or overly um, surprising about it really. I think it's more the flavour that this beer will come in. Uh, to be honest, I will say that about the sour beers as well. The sour beers, it's more the flavour that does the talking. It's not like an imperial stout or a scotch ale or something like that where there's a lot to the aroma. Really, these beers, 
more kind of do their talking in the, the flavour rather than anything else. So without further ado then, let's have a taste of this beer. So this is the Veiled Mashish, an elderflower sour beer at 5.4% from Breakeria in Landskrona here in Skåne in the south of Sweden. Let's get stuck into this one. Slange, skull, cheers. Yeah, I mean, what I'll say about this beer, one of the things is, I always try to go into things with an open mind, elderflower really isn't one of the things that I enjoy all that much, and in this beer, it's you can tell that this beer is well done, but I think it's one of these ones that... Um, Yeah, I mean, you can tell straight away, this is a really, really nice and, and really well done beer. But for me, the elderflower, I think it's one of these ones that I can't maybe appreciate quite in the uh, in the same way, if that makes sense. Because, el as I say, elderflower is something that I've just not, not ever really been such a great fan of. And, but you can tell this is a really nice beer and it does taste nice, if that makes sense. If you took the elderflower away from this beer for me, it would actually be um, really nice. And I mean, maybe you're saying to yourself, why is this guy, when he doesn't like elderflower, why is he reviewing this beer? I have to admit, I was very curious about it. I mean, when I first tried sour beers, I never particularly liked them. I, just, I really did not take to them at all when I first tried them. But I kind of thought, you know, persevere with it a little bit and see if you can like it. And, you know, with this brewery, if anyone can get me to like an elderflower beer, an elderflower sour beer, it is breakery it. So that's one of the things I'm thinking with this beer. And I will say, you know, as you get more and more into it, I do, I am actually warming to it a little bit because you can taste that the elderflower, this, and I think, I'm sure I said the same about the, 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 light, the veiled lilac when I had it before. We'll start off with the malt base in this one. You know, you can feel with this beer, you can feel that sort of wheaty, bready smoothness that this beer has. I do suspect there's a little bit of a pale malt base to this one as well. On top of that, you really get the wheaty smoothness. And I think there's an element of a kind of, if you go further towards the front of the palate, I think there's an element of a, a kind of vanilla flavoured one in this. And there's an element of a, a the, the, the wheaty smoothness really does shine out in this one. There is a little touch of a... a, a a woody flavour to this one, that kind of oaky note, but there is an element of vanilla in here. And I will, pardon me, I will say that about this beer. The elderflower inside it, it mixes really well with that, and it's, um, as, you know, the aftertaste, for me, I would say the aftertaste of this beer is is really quite nice, actually. I do like the aftertaste of this one when the elderflower fades a bit. So maybe the elderflower beers that I've had before have just been, like, really, um, you know, they've maybe just been really kind of strong, and they've put a hell of a lot of elderflower in them. Either that or the malt base and the hops and things haven't been that strong, and the flavour has just been a little bit more prominent. But I do think this has got a really nice aftertaste to it, this one. I will say that about it. And yeah, as I get further and further into it, when I'm, I'm trying it, you know, the, the elderflower, it becomes, your brain sort of focuses on it a little bit less. And you can begin to enjoy the beer a little bit more in that regard. You know, as I say, you have to go into these things with an open mind. The other thing that I noticed about this one that is very similar to the Lilac one, it really, when you take the first sip of this beer, you really will notice that just how sharp it is when it comes in. You get a, It almost makes your mouth water, really, when you take this beer in. The, the real, it comes in with a real tart bite. And um, it just kind of smooths out a little bit. And you'll really feel that, particularly on the first sip of this one. It comes in and it's really sharp and tart and sherberty and things like that. It really is interesting, this beer. And I will say, and I, you know, as I said before, that elderflower thing, it is going more and more into the, the background as I drink more and more of this beer. I'll say that about it and you know it can grow on you a little bit. It is a nice infusion and I can see why people uh, you know why people really like putting the 
why people like putting elderflower in the beers because if you have a beer like this that's got a nice sort of wheaty rye and bready malt base it can work it's probably a little bit of the spice from the rye is kind of mixing with it really as well and the sort of sweetness you get from the wheaty side of things and I guess the oaky flavours as well. It really, this beer does work quite well. If you enjoy an elderflower beer, I think this is one that you're going to enjoy quite a lot. As I say though, the thing for me is the elderflower is something that I've not really been a great fan of, but as I say, go into it with an open mind and see what you think. And yeah, the elderflower for me is coming out in the middle of the palate and um, kind of towards the front a little bit and it sits there as you go further into the aftertaste as well you can taste the elderflower sort of it almost it almost comes out a little bit when your tongue is kind of drying out if that makes sense it just pushes its way to the surface and you can feel that just slightly spicy it's, it's almost spicy and a little bit herbal if that makes sense it, it, it's, it's really interesting in that regard i can really see why people like putting this into their beers. It's an interesting one this and I have to say um, even if I'm not such a great fan of the elderflower flavours this is a high quality beer and if you like elderflower beers I think you are um, going to enjoy this one. I've, you know I'll say that about it. Breakeria are not going to put a bad beer out there. This one is I think maybe you know it might it would maybe grow on me if you like. I'd like to try the original and see what the original is like as well. I will make sure I review that if they bring the original out again. But for me, um, it's a nice enough beer, it really is very solid, but as I say, I'm just not sure if it's one that I would go back to. But, you know, I will stay, keep an open mind with these elderflower beers. I've had a couple of them, and I tried them when I very, really first started drinking beer. I've tried one or two over the course of doing the channel. You know, one of the big ones in Scotland is the Cairngorm Brewery's Trade Winds. That's an elderflower beer. Um, and there's also, you know, elderflower ciders, Copperberg, I've got a lime, I'm sure it's a lime and elderflower cider, um, but I just, I never quite took to that, that flavour, but in this, it, it does work well and it does infuse well when you've got these woody, um, kind of wheaty, vanilla -y type flavours, it really does work well with them. Yeah, I, I can... In fairness, I will say I can see this beer growing on me a little bit, and this one has kind of made me think, yeah, maybe I should go back to some of these elderflower beers and just see how we get on. Because as I say, you can tell it's it's a top quality beer. So I'll I'll keep that in mind with this, and I will will I will maybe or I will try and have a go at the the original mashes and see how we get on with that, and I will try a few other elderflower beers when I get the chance. But um, let's focus on the hops for this now. In the back corners of the palate, there's a little bit of um, earthiness there, a little touch of it. I do wonder if they've used German hops in this because of the way that earthiness is coming out. It's just got a little bit of that almost noble sweetness to it. But as you come further forward, there's a little bit of a herbal quality in there, and then it becomes a little bit more floral and spicy towards the front corners of the palate. Then as you go round the very front curve of the tongue, it's just a little bit more lighter and grassy. And that sort of tart floral quality to the beer is kind of mixing in with the... Um, with the sort of grassy notes out of the beer as well. When you go behind the front curve of the palate, that's where you get that little oily bubble where those juicy, fruity notes start to, to come out of the beer as well. But overall, it's uh, you know it, it's an interesting beer, this one. It is nice, um, but as I say, I'm not sure about the elderflower for me. It's it's just a flavour that I'm not such a great fan of. I did, and you know, in fairness, I did say the same thing about coffee, and uh, then I tried some coffee stouts and really, really liked them. So maybe this is another one that will grow on me over a little while. So. I will make a promise to the channel then, I will try and review a few more uh, elderflower beers over the next while, but this one, if you do enjoy the style, I think you will uh, You will really like this one. If you like sour beers and you like elderflower beers, this one really will hit the spot for you. It is a well done beer. For me, I'm just not sure. It, it's, it's quite one, it's, I'm not sure if it's one that I'll revisit, but we'll need to see about that. In terms of the mouthfeel then, it's... Um, Yeah, light bodied beer this one, uh, nice carbonation on this one is quite smooth, it's got a little bit of a, a, a prickle to it, uh, quite a wet mouth feel rather than anything else, the malt base in this one again is really really quite nice and it fuses well with that elderflower element that you've got to the beer. Nice little bit of hoppy bitterness, but the hops are quite smooth in fairness. Good little bit of tart character. The tartness is coming out just uh, behind the front edge of the tongue, the edge of the front uh, part. Um, it is coming out quite nicely. 
and you've got a nice little bit of a, a juicy fruity note in there but it, it's a kind of lemongrassy sort of flavour that you're getting out of this beer but overall a well done beer maybe just not quite for me so well done once again to uh, to Breakery they've produced a really really solid beer with this one the malt base in it's lovely um, but if you enjoy the elderflower beers you will enjoy this and uh, if you like sour beers again it's one I think you're going to be quite impressed with the barrel aging with these beers it really does work uh, quite well I'd be interested to see them do a barrel aged um, purple rain or something like that. I think that could be a really interesting thing. Uh, so hopefully that's one they look at in the near future. But yeah, let's leave it at that for this one. So this one was the Veiled Mashers, a 5.4% uh, barrel aged elderflower sour beer from Bukharia in Landskrona here in Skåne in the south of Sweden. So until the next time, it's Slanger just now and I will catch you guys very soon. If you like elderflower and you like sour beers, this is one that I think is going to hit the spot for you. So until the next time, it's Slanger just now and I will catch you guys soon. Skål!